Telomere shortening is a hallmark of aging. But even worse than that, it negatively impacts other hallmarks, including genomic instability, mitochondrial dysfunction, and stem cell exhaustion. More specifically, telomere length declines during aging. And that's what we'll see here with data from men and women. On the y-axis, we've got LTL, or leukocyte telomere length, so telomere length inside white blood cells, plotted against age on the X from about 20 to 100 years old. And for both men and women, we can see that age-related decline, such that average telomere length in youth is about 7.75 kilobases, whereas in 100-year-olds, it's an average closer to about 5 kilobases. Now, a central premise of the channel is to try to slow aging by optimizing biomarkers of as many organ systems as possible. Telomere length is on the list. And with that in mind, I now have data for 12 tests. So what's my telomere length? And then with the goal of potentially lengthening telomeres, getting them closer to youthful status, which factors are significantly correlated? So let's jump right into the data. And to address that, I sent blood to True Diagnostic. If you want to measure your own telomere length, there's a discount link in the video's description. So here's that data for all 12 tests. Telomere length on the y-axis plotted against collection date on the X. For three tests in 2022, average telomere length was 7.04 kilobases. In 2023, over eight tests, it was a bit higher, 7.13 kilobases. All right, what about 2024? The first test of this year was on January 15th, and we can see that telomere length was a bit better than 2023 at 7.16 kilobases. And note that that's a nice rebound from the last test, which was 7.06 kilobases, which is when I supplemented with two grams of NMN per day with the goal of increasing NAD and doing a different experiment. Now, I'll link to that experiment in the right video if you missed it. But no NMN, higher telomere length, at least for this one test. So in terms of biomarker goals, they are to improve year over year and or to resist any age-related decline. So we can see that both of these are true. But this is only part of the story. Remember, youth is characterized by a telomere length of an average telomere length of 7.75 kilobases. So I've got some work to do to try to get back to that or as close to that as I can. So with that in mind, can telomere length be further lengthened? And with that in mind, which factors are significantly correlated with telomere length? So let's start off by taking a look at correlations for diet with telomere length. So note that I looked at uh, comparisons for 97 foods macro, uh, foods, macro, and micronutrients against telomere length. So for those who may be new to the approach or new to the channel, I track diet every day, I weigh all my food, I enter that data into chronometer, and then I manually enter that data into a spreadsheet. Now, if there's a 60-day period, just for example, it may be 49, it may be 42, it may be 56, let's just say 60 days in between blood tests. The average dietary intake for that period lines up with the latter blood test. So every blood test, every biomarker has a corresponding average dietary intake. And then once I get past about five uh, blood tests or five biomarker data, data for about five biomarkers, I start looking at correlations. So I now have 12 tests for telomere length so we can look at correlations. And that's what we can see here. These are the top hits, and I mentioned that these are the top hits because there are 37 foods or nutrients that are significantly correlated at a p-value less than 0.05 with telomere length. If you're interested in the full list, they're in the correlations tier on Patreon, so check that out if you're interested. In terms of what's on the table, the lowercase r is the correlation coefficient, and then the p-value, you can see that all of the foods or nutrients on this list have a p-value less than or equal to 0.01. In terms of what's on the list, we can see that Positive correlations for vitamin B1, black pepper, beets, selenium, Brazil nuts, cloves, and vitamin K. In other words, towards the higher end of my range, intake for these foods and nutrients is significantly correlated with a longer telomere length. Conversely, total fructose has an inverse, a significant inverse correlation with telomere length. So in other words, a relatively higher fructose intake is inversely correlated or significantly correlated with a lower, shorter telomere length. Now note that this is not from sugar-sweetened beverages and junk food. My diet, in terms of calorie amounts, is 99% clean, 1% from junk at most, somewhere in that ballpark. And I've detailed that in my diet composition videos. Now note that these are the correlations after test number one in 2024. And the reason I raised that issue is, let's take a look at the correlations after test number seven in 2023. So two tests later, is the list the same? Has the list changed? 
So we can see first that there were 43 foods or nutrients that were significantly correlated to Tessigo, and now it's 37. So some foods or nutrients have come off the uh, significant list at a p-value less than 0.05. But what's uh, still on the list are four foods or nutrients, or at the top of the list. Selenium, vitamin B1, Brazil nuts, and black pepper are on both correlation lists. But we can see that whereas Parmesan cheese was the top hit, top correlation hit, two tests ago, it's not on the top list two tests later. Its correlation currently is negative 0.62, which is still significant at a p-value less than 0.05, but its correlation has weakened, which suggests that other stuff may be more important for impacting telomere length. Cacao beans is also in that same situation. It had a correlation coefficient of negative 0.88. It's now negative 0.61. So that correlation has weakened, suggesting that, again, other stuff may be more important if correlation impacts uh, causation. Now, note that this approach is uh, one of measurement and then evaluating correlations after measurement, which I, I term find out. That's the find out phase. And then after evaluating correlations, following as, as many of them as possible, or the intervention phase, which I call the F around. So this is the F around find out approach for trying to optimize biomarkers as an, as an approach for trying to slow aging. Now, all jokes aside, these are unadjusted correlations. And with that in mind, are any of these foods or nutrients significantly correlated with telomere length after adjusting for calorie intake? And that's important to consider because calorie intake is significantly associated or significantly correlated with telomere length, which is what we can see here. On the y-axis, we've got telomere length plotted against the average daily calorie intake. And remember, this is the average da da uh, daily dietary intake from one blood test to the next. And then we can see that there is a significant inverse correlation. For comparison, after test number seven, that correlation was negative 0.85. So the correlation for calorie intake with telomere length has weakened by a bit, which suggests that maybe it's not just telomere length that's driving uh, improvements for, uh, for telomere length. There may be other stuff in the diet that could do it too, which is good news because eventually I'll reach a lower limit for calorie intake where I just can't get leaner because if I get leaner, I'm also losing muscle mass and I'm not trying to do that. So it's, this is important data because it suggests that there may be other stuff in the diet besides calorie intake that could impact telomere length. So what this data shows is that a relatively higher calorie intake is significantly correlated with a shorter telomere length. And conversely, a relatively lower calorie intake is significantly correlated with a longer telomere, telomere, telomere length. So to address the question, are any of these correlations sig significant after adjusting for calorie intake, I then built multivariate linear regression models. And what that means is just a fancy way of saying that now after uh, what's included in the model isn't just the food or nutrient, Calories are now also included. And after adjusting for calorie intake, we can see that in this case, vitamin B1 is still significantly positively correlated with telomere length. So after adjusting for calorie intake, vitamin B1 is significantly associated with telomere length. And using that same approach, black pepper, beets, selenium, and Brazil nuts are also still significantly associated with telomere length after adjusting for calorie intake. But that's no longer true for cloves and anything below cloves won't will, will also not be significant as their correlations are weaker so adjusting for calorie intake will make the uh, correlation probably make the correlation even weaker so the goal for the next test then is to test this hypothesis to potentially intervene if i increase these foods or nutrients for test number two in 2024 will i increase telomere length and i i am doing that so for vitamin B1, I've added peas already into the diet with the goal of increasing trigonelline, which may impact NAD. I'll put the link to that video if you missed that experiment in the right corner. But then I've also increased or kept relatively high black pepper, beets, selenium, and Brazil nuts. So I'm following all five of these top correlations for telomere length. The question is though, will it work? Test number two for 2024 and 2024 is scheduled for March 4th. So that data should be uh, around sometime at the end of March. So stay tuned for an update sometime in early April. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for epigenetic testing, including telomere length, NAD quantification, oral microbiome composition, at-home metabolomics, at-home blood testing with SciFox Health, which includes ApoB, green tea, chronometer, 
Or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Dai Chang brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.